Hi, this is Adam and you're watching CIDI 99.1 FM. Hello, my name is Eva Scheer and you're listening to CIDI 99.1 FM. Thank you so much for joining us today. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your history or maybe uprising and how you got started. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, this is really uh, wonderful. And uh, uh, I've actually seen uh, your other interviews and it's really neat. Thank you for doing this series. It's, it's great for artists like us who are not Andy Warhols of the world. Could you share everything you do with us in detail? Okay, so uh, um, I was born some time ago and I will die like everybody else. But in the meantime, I guess more details, that's everybody's always happy to talk about themselves and I think I'm not that different and I gladly tell you everything. Um, so uh, yes, I was born uh, in Warsaw, uh, grew up in uh, communist times of, of Poland and although I must say that I had a really good humanistic uh, education uh, from music to art to history to so I, I think that was really quite uh, important I, I, I suppose I don't know I'm a humanist so all those things that I've learned were very important to me and uh, Okay, so I was born, I went to school, and then uh, I got uh, interested very much in philosophy and of course art then, and all that is human. And that led me to study philosophy and psychology. I just wanted to know what makes us tick and why we are the way we are and what's wrong with us, those little humanoids. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, so that was still in Warsaw uh, or in Poland, I met my first partner who was a photographer and that led me to looking at photography in a sort of, in a very deep way. Uh, well, and that I'm mentioning because it had a huge impact on how I see everything practically. So then, um, then uh, we got pregnant and we had the opportunity to, to come to Canada. Because the worst thing in Poland actually was that there were no perspective to, we lived in a tiny apartment, there were no perspective to, to better our situation. And also we could never travel, we could never go anywhere. And that was like jail, that was horrible. Uh, but I think we now sort of all experiencing a little bit of what it is not to be able to travel. And I'm not saying tourism but travel as as the world you know you read about the world but you know you'll never be there that's 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 a little bit different but anyway so then we came to Canada uh, and uh, we continued uh, uh, sort of artistic uh, uh, activities with uh, shows that were collaboration work on well, photography, we did a series that was called uh, Memorial Photography. And, uh, and then uh, our relationship sort of didn't work too well. And uh, I began studies in uh, design. So I did fashion design in Toronto. Then, it's just in short, and then after that I, um, I met uh, my second partner and that got me to Africa. So we lived there for a while, then we went to um, Saskatchewan, to Regina, and that's where I did uh, the master degree in fine arts. Uh, and then we came to Montreal, and uh, after Montreal, basically about four years ago, I moved here to Saturn, which was culmination in some way of a long life dream of... Um, um, I always felt that North America, north of North America, is the future of the planet because of the fresh water resources. We see how long they will be fresh, but so far so good. And uh, taking into account the pollution and climate change, I felt like the best thing in the world would be to buy a piece of land, forest, and protect it and keep it, and that would be my legacy for my children. That was. That was the idea I had in Poland as well as a kid. I don't know why, but that was the... And now, basically, coming to Saturn, in some ways, this happened. 
So uh, I'm, I suppose I'm in a place where, where I was coming towards for a very long time. So that's, in short, history of the movement. And can you share everything you do with us in detail? Well, many things. That means I use uh, many mediums, but I will... Uh, the most important three elements is basically um, drawing. I, I stay with drawing on my left because uh, I find that the simplicity of this medium is unparalleled. It's, it's something what is the most primal visual expression that we actually do. Is it drawing with a stick on sand or, or a pencil on paper? So there is basically just the, the most basic tools, right? So that, that is, I am mesmerized by that simplicity. And also, it is very environmental, what can I tell you, right? And uh, the second one, ironically, is photography. But when I mean photography, when I say photography, I mean really the analog photography. Photography to me is a document. I know we can have photography as art, and that's in some ways even the creation of photography, discovery of photographic process, was culmination of the efforts of artists to actually have the tool to, to document reality, right? So in some ways it came from that artistic impulse, but in the end it's a document. So, to me, photography is almost like a philosophical tool of documenting reality. We have no other tool uh, than photography for that. I mean, of course, the sound, but uh, it, it's unparalleled. We don't have anything else like that. So, that power of document is what photography has, the analog photography, the old one, which was like a fingerprint of reality, the process of the exposure of the light on the gelatin surface, right? Now, when you see the uh, digital photography, that document, document function is disturbed because you can manipulate all that was registered digitally, you can manipulate before you even print it. So that's why we start to have questions, what's truth, right? Because you can manipulate, like the, the old photograph, it, it took really, uh, it was difficult to manipulate it to, to really mess it up or to do photo montage, which I loved doing then, but that was very difficult to make it seamless. Now with virtual reality and, and digital, you basically can create anything you want. So that is incredible tool for imaginative kind of world if you want to go there, which I think at some point might be too much for our psychology really. Can we handle all this, right? So anyway, going back, I use photograph as a document only in my artwork. And that is because I want to point out to that, to, to reality. So the third element of my work that I, or is basically the real environment. So some of my work, which is, uh, I call it ice paintings or metallographs, it's basically uh, using, like going in a forest and, and putting pigments on ice and then photographing it. So it's, it's ephemeral art or, or um, real environments like uh, when I was building the home, everything, every aspect of this was an artistic process to me. And, but that also comes from that other sensitivity, sensibility of seeing art as everyday activity, that there is no difference between your tasks and things you do. So you wash your dish, you prepare a meal or you draw. It is activity. There is in, in existential sense there is no difference. You just doing something. So uh, that leads me to basically say that um, there was never really a beginning for me for starting art. It's been always somehow intertwined with everything I was doing. Mind you, I think that at some point I was introduced to Zen and that really 
gave me this sort of uh, definition to see, to define what I'm doing and what I'm seeing, which was, yeah, there is no difference between you playing guitar right now or singing or or talking if you're aware how you talk. Is this, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> so, so, anyway, so, so that is this question of when, when one becomes artist or starts doing something artistic. I, I think if, if you have that sensibility, you probably do it all your life, knowingly or not knowingly, right? And then you might turn it into profession, Right, so in some ways, everybody can be uh, express themselves artistically, and they should. Now, who is professional in it? That's another. I think that's a little bit another um, issue or level of expertise or whatever. What would you say your art today is about in general? So, time where everything is art, right? And I think people like yourself or or me, artists, we. We sort of professionals. We try to somehow define ourselves in it, but you know, if art can be a, a five-year-old splatting paint, and then there's this thing, oh, this person is a genius and sells the artwork, then you sort of like, okay, it is art, but what does it mean in a larger scenario? What does it mean that artists are now preoccupied with selling their work on internet more than actually they can create? What is it when we we combine? And I think I will credit or blame people like Andy Warhol who conflate, conflated, confused the business and art. I don't actually think that you can do the art in all seriousness and and devotion and at the same time sell it. I think these are two different activities two different one is yeah selling is not making art right so if somebody says art making or selling art is is art itself where well, then that's where the confusion is because i think i don't know where art is going but i know that to me and many people art is basically about moving you towards something to inspire you to want to live it's an existential ache and that's what art does to us. So where it's going, I don't know. It looks like it's going more towards the virtual, towards... Now, have you heard of this uh, non-fungible tokens? So, uh, what was it, two days ago or something? I've read the... They auctioned the art artwork on that for 90 million. So it's, it's basically digital artwork. Um, well, great. How does it help us? You know, it's a, it's a, so I think the art is separated now into this mega million billion kind of things. And in the meantime, there's also art that, uh, that sustains us as people. Because I don't believe that art for 90 million sustains anybody except uh, financially, whatever, <laughs> right? Do you believe the industry you're in will change within the upcoming years? Well, I mean, it seems like everything is moving towards the uh, digital, right? Uh, and, and buying online, never seeing the artwork uh, in real. So that brings us to question what's real. And also, uh, just last two years, we are being moved onto, you know, digital lives, uh, meetings, like... Where is the real? So that brings me back to myself, or not myself, but how I see the world. I don't think technology has anything to do with our sense of well-being or happiness. It's more to do with convenience, really. Uh, that the fact that we are moved towards more digital lives and entertainment, I think we, we pretty soon will miss how to even perceive reality. But you see, on the other hand, maybe it's not all lost because musicians, I think everybody's waiting when we finally can have concerts. And because, why people go to concerts? They could just listen on the radio or, I mean, uh, you know, stream it. But they still want to go to the concert. They still want to have the 
the sense of togetherness, right? And and this. So I think maybe maybe not all is lost uh, with reality. <laughs> What's been your favorite work of art so far and why? Oh, my own. Uh, no, no, because it's, you know, it's always evolving. And, and um, I mean, okay, I do have, I, I like something because maybe it's a portrait of my daughter. So that is sort of uh, more personal. But um, I basically work in a series because I will start, let's say, a series of drawings and then I will continue uh, for example, there is a series called Imago Illustris, which, which are uh, drawings, portraits, where a tiny piece of photograph of the eyes are, is incorporated. So these are like photo drawings, photo because there is a little bit of a photograph which I then see these are the real eyes of, of the sitter, and then the rest is a, is a drawing. So this series, Imago Illustris, is, uh, it's been running for 20 years. Then another one, Imago Historicus, which are portraits where I put people, contemporary people, into historical setting. And uh, then there is an abstract series that they evolve. So there are drawings, pure drawings or drawings with some photography. Then there is meteographs, which are those uh, paintings on ice, uh, ephemeral uh, project. And that started uh, 34 years ago, and I'm still doing it. So it's, um, yeah, I, I, I think it, I'm not sure if, uh, it is not about what's favorite as a one piece, but it's just sort of, um, maybe it's more like doing, there's so many questions and so many different ways to, to express something, right? So I guess that's why there are, like, I, I really would like if you could see uh, my website and, you know, images or a picture speaks thousand worlds, words, so <laughs> maybe that would be better than me describing it. But, um, yeah. So no, I don't have a particularly favorite one. It's just those series. When you feel overwhelmed or seem to have lost your focus, do you have anything you do to get yourself back into the zone? Yeah, no, it's all about somehow the mental space, right? And when we overwhelmed and all that. Oh, yeah, because I was just thinking recently, and that is a little bit about COVID too, uh, that we take care of our bodies so almost maniacally and we forget about the mental health. And let's say if we overwhelm, that is our mental capacity being really impeded, right? We, we just don't know. So in a simple things like tired or, you know, then we realize we need to meditate or go for a walk or do something with our body that actually springs the mind into, right? So basically we have to take care more of our mental health, not more, but mental health. It's really underrated, you know? And mental health is basically like when you, Let's say you have a cancer and you, your approach to it would be the, even if you die of it, if you have, you know, more positive or just you understand where you're going and you go with the open eyes, you're going to have a, you know, the last moments of your life still fulfilled instead of being in fear and, right? So, uh, I'm sort of all over the place, I suppose, but... Um, yeah, no, it's uh, overwhelmed means my mind is just not computing. So you have to do something called showers, meditation, fasting. You have to really shake yourself out of it. And that's very practical kind of, you know. Do you do anything before um, you start creating um, in which to inspire yourself? Yeah, the... Um, uh, well, I live in a really beautiful spot, so it's forested, on top of the hill. I see every day if there is a, you know, no no clouds. I see the sunset every time, sunrise every time. We are in a zone where there is a hoarfrost most of the time, so it's just stunning beauty, and you somehow want to hold on to it. You want to 
um, translate it somehow, express it. But, you know, beauty is such that it's ephemeral, it's, it's fleeting. And I guess that's what artists, maybe they're insatiable in trying to hold on to it. And uh, so, yeah, so being here, it's, uh, it's the most inspirational thing, yeah. At the end of the day, what message do you want your art to share with the world? I guess I, I already said that about, um, you know, this sort of uh, not fearing death, not being afraid of it. Uh, because, I mean, we, we don't even realize how much that we say, oh, I'm not afraid of death. Of course not. But you're always afraid of something. Where is that ang anxiousness coming from and fear, right? So it is what I would like myself to learn, not to fear. And uh, I think life without fear is it's the main, this is probably the, the goal. Only then you, you have your life fulfilled. That, you know, no anxiety or if it's possible, you know. I would like my artwork. Very often the, the artwork does touch people and they get very sad. But I think because, you know, Death is not funny, right? Or life. Life is not funny either. <laughs> yeah. And what do you believe is next for you? Do you have any big projects for the upcoming year? Well, you know, having those series, those different series that I have, that's all I can always sort of uh, get on. But I also do. Uh, work on commission and I really like that process so portraits are commissioned I prefer to, to do commissioned work because I'm not sure if I like just do something for myself and store it in my studio that's not really what I want art to be for unless it's for let's say some show in a gallery and then there is a coherent message or something some kind of yeah um, communication but otherwise uh, doing work on commission that's that's being that's what I think being professional artist is I'm an expert in aesthetics and and art so I can your I can visualize your ideas for example right so so then I have commissions for portraits and uh, and that's and that's sort of uh, that's how it's determined then. So by people, by, by being hired to do uh, portraits. Uh, otherwise it's, um, yeah, I mentioned to you, like you, you walk and you see the shadows on the snow and you just somehow want to hold on to it. So you start to draw. Or, you know. It's instinctual, right? It's not, um, I don't have a particular mechanism you know just sort of intuitive and yeah beautiful is there anywhere that we can find you in your work okay so um the website eva so eva is e-w-a sheer s-c-h-e-e-r dot com so that's my website it's quite exhaustive <laughs> and also uh this february february 10th to mid-april there would be a show exhibit of two of my work, uh, two of the streams, so one Meteographs and Imago Historicus in uh, Museum uh, Brock in uh, Callensville. Is there any message you have for the community before we leave? This has been uh, Artists of the Week. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I feel very honored and uh, all the best to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Adam and you've been watching Artists of the Week on CIDI 99.1 FM.